Hello everybody, this is Steve and I'm back recording from my study in our house here in Troy, Illinois. Um, I'd like to read three passages tonight and um, as always I will be reading from the NIV version of the Bible. I'm going to start by reading from the seventh chapter of John, verses 37 through 39. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this, he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. <clears throat> now I'm going to jump back to Acts, starting chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, 
I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Lastly, I'd like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse, starting with verse 3 and all the way through 13. <coughs> Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all of its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. We were all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> In the very late 60s and early 70s, Barbara Streisand was in her rock and roll period and released at least two albums that were very much rhythm and blues and rock oriented. And it was during this time that she became one of my favorite performers. I have several of her albums, made eight track and later cassette tapes of them over the years, and now have most of those same songs on CD. And one of my favorites has always been a song called Space Captain. In it, she tells to a hard, throbbing beat how her spaceship once flew close to this planet, and now they're all trapped here until they learn to live together in peace. 
In fact, the second verse goes, lost my memory of where I've been. We've all forgot that we could fly. Someday we'll all change into peaceful men. Then we'll return into the sky. Learning to live together. Learning to live together. And so on. I've often wondered just how someone could forget that they could fly. In the third book of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Life, the Universe, and Everything, author Douglas Adams gives us the guide's take on flying. The guide says that there is an art to flying, or rather, a knack. The knack lies in learning how to throw yourself at the ground and miss. Later on in that same book, we find our hero, Arthur Dent, trying to run down a mountain that is collapsing underneath of him. We read, He ran with the fear of death in him, under him, over him, and grabbing hold of his hair. And suddenly he tripped again and was hurled forward by his considerable momentum. But just at the moment that he was about to hit the ground astoundingly hard, he saw lying directly in front of him a small navy tote bag that he knew for a fact he had lost in the baggage retrieval system at the Athens airport some 10 years previously in his personal time scale. And in his astonishment, he missed the ground completely and bobbed off into the air with his brain singing. In other words, he forgot to fall. What he was doing was this. He was flying. He glanced around him in surprise, but there was no doubt that that was what he was doing. No part of him was touching the ground, and no part of him was even approaching it. Now, I'm not proposing that any of us here could fly around if we could just finagle a way to forget to fall after we tripped over something. In fact, most of us are at that point where much of our concentration is on not tripping or stumbling in the first place. What I am proposing, however, is that it is truly amazing what we do manage to forget over the course of our lives. I worked with a smart mouth kid many years ago who was telling about the older mechanic who had worked there when he started. They were having words when the older guy said, I forgot more than you'll ever know about case tractors. That's the problem, retorted the youngster. You've forgotten it. Now, I grant you, when I first was told this some 40 years ago, it was almost funny. But it has become decidedly less so over the years. 
our minds tend to retain those things we find of particular interest and lose track of those things that are less so. Now, what those things might be are generally different from individual to individual. One of you might be especially good at keeping track of the bloodlines of your livestock or even pets. While I can tell you the torque specs and sequence for installing a head on a case diesel engine. Some can recite the winners and scores of every baseball game played since odd eight. While someone else could list each of the ingredients for a pineapple upside down cake. Still others might rattle off names of movies and who starred in them, while others can point to any automobile and tell you the make and model and the year it was built. And for each one of those things that I've mentioned and countless other things that some people might remember, there are just as many others who wouldn't have a clue nor care about any one of them. And each of these verses address a subject that I think many, if not most, of us have forgotten the Holy Spirit. In the book Fahrenheit 451, Ray Bradbury describes a world where books are not only forbidden, but it is the job of the fireman to find and burn them. One fireman, however, by the name of Montag, begins to question why and rebels against the system. One thing he learns is that it was not the government that banished the books and knowledge in the beginning. It was the apathy of the general public that made books and reading superfluous. It was the apathy that, that nobody cared what was in them, nor wanted to take the time to find out. It was only after books fell out of favor that the government saw and seized the opportunity to control what knowledge the public did learn. Enough fact was mixed in with the new knowledge to make it all sound feasible. But no one remembered anymore what was or wasn't fact. And so the proffered knowledge became their reality. For example, Ben Franklin was still listed in the history of the firemen as being the first fireman. But the brochure then went on about how firemen had always used special methods to safely use kerosene and other methods to destroy all manner of unacceptable reading materials. The inference was that Ben Franklin was the first to burn books. And no one knew enough to challenge that idea. 
And yes, the Bible was on that list. Oh, there was still a religious organization, but its purpose was to promote certain products and or programs that Jesus would support. People, we are not so far from that very thing happening in our world today. I once read an article about teaching Bible classes in our schools, which included the following excerpt of a Gallup poll of scriptural knowledge among 1,002 U.S. teens. 17% thought the road to Damascus was where Jesus was crucified. 22% thought Moses was either one of Jesus' 12 apostles, Egypt's Pharaoh, or an angel, rather than the man who led Israel out of bondage. 68% couldn't identify who asked, Am I my brother's keeper? It was Cain after he murdered Abel. 28% didn't realize that do not divorce isn't among the Ten Commandments. 53% couldn't say what biblical event occurred at Cana. Jesus turned water into wine. How did you do on these questions? And asking that question leads me back to what the overriding common factor of all of today's verses is and ask, what do you know about the Holy Spirit. We have heard Jesus say, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. And that by this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. We read how when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. I also read that to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of, fee of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of one and the same Spirit, 
and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Each of these deal with the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet, how many of us have just seemed to forget that he's about? We forget that the Trinity consists of God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Somewhere over the course of time, we have downplayed the importance of that third party. And so it is that we have also come to consider his importance less and less. We just plain forget. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm just as guilty. I just don't remember ever being taught very much about the Holy Ghost at any point of my growing up, or since for that matter. And that is a real shame, for we are told over and over again that it is the Holy Spirit that gives each of us our gifts just as he determines. We're told that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And that in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. We've forgotten all of these things. We have forgotten many things over the centuries. Indeed, we have forgotten so much that we don't even remember what we have forgotten. I'll tell you what else we've forgotten. We have forgotten about the young girl in town who's struggling to raise a child all alone. We've forgotten about the family who has lost their income due to a mine closing or a plant moving out of state. We have forgotten about the orphans in Sarajevo, tsunami victims, the starving in Africa, the poor in South America. They're not a part of our world, so we don't think about them. And if we don't think about them, for us, they don't exist. We forget them. And because we have forgotten about all of these people crying out in hunger and pain and grief, we've forgotten the importance of maintaining our support for them through our giving of our time and money. We have forgotten that. We have forgotten that Jesus himself intended for all of us to be and act as one body, the body of Christ in all things. And that is exactly what Paul is saying in these verses from 1 Corinthians this, this morning. The body is a unit, though it may be made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, 
they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. So let's all read our Bibles. Let's all rediscover who and what the Holy Spirit really is and how he relates to us and our relationship with God. If we profess to be Christian, we'll study and learn and follow all that it means to be Christian. Who knows? Maybe someday we will discover we really can fly. Let all of God's people say, Amen. May the presence of God, the Creator, give you strength. May the presence of God, the Redeemer, give you peace. May the presence of God, the Sustainer, give you comfort. May the presence of God, the Sanctifier, give you love.